we got young Zodiac here. He's going to be our model for collars today. Maybe we'll get some other ones out too, but um, this video is about horse collars. Uh, what they are, what the different types are, and even how they should fit. And maybe we'll put some stuff about Hames in there. So uh, first thing, obviously, is the function of the collar. Sits on the neck. The horse pushes on the collar. They don't actually pull loads. They push loads. They push on the collar. And that collar has to fit a certain way so it doesn't ride up here and cut his wind off. Can't be too heavy up here. Has to sit on his sides real good. Rest on his sides is an even better word. The sides of his shoulder. And um, let's uh, look into collars and see what makes a collar that'll do all those things. Uh, first, we'll start with uh, the three basic collar types. First one we'll use is, well, we'll use this one because it doesn't have a pad in it. This is a old farm collar uh, we had made years ago. Uh, not a very big one. I'll measure it and we'll see how big it is. Probably a 23. 20, 23 is shrunk down a little. It probably started life as a 23. It's 22 and a half. This is a half Sweeney. I'm going to put that horse away until we need him. <laughs> uh, there's no sense getting him out here, letting him paw and be nervous. Let's just put him up so he can eat some hay and be happy. Ooh, and then when we need him, he can demonstrate. Uh, half swing. Uh, your next type of collar. I'll show you another half Sweeney. This might illustrate it better. This is Zodiac's actual collar that he's wearing working every day. Here's your half Sweeney. You see how that's half cut away. Half Sweeney. In fact, what I'll do is I'll, I'll use these other three collars and then we'll have a, a consistent type of collar to show the Sweeney's. Uh, we'll get this big guy down. I never used this collar. I had a horse for it and I lost the poor devil. I wish I had the horse back. So, half Sweeney. That's half cut away on the top. That'll fit most horses. Uh, if you get a really thick neck, and it, it doesn't happen near as often as people think, but you get a really thick neck like a stud or something, or like the boy that was going to wear this collar, you cut away a little more. See, half of that's cut away, more is cut away. That's called a full Sweeney. And that's for a big, thick, macho neck on a horse. Um, next, I'll show you what my boy LB wears. This is a full collar, nothing cut away. So let's go right in order. Full collar, nothing cut away, big, thick, right through here. A horse with a little bit thinner neck, a lot of percherons, a lot of young horses uh, can wear a full collar. Um, most every mule wears a full collar. I'm not a mule guy, but from what I've seen, most mules need a full collar. Uh, from full, full, all big, thick in there for thinner necked horse. We go to half Sweeney. This is an average neck horse. Half Sweeney. Half of that is cut away. And then a big thick necked horse, like a stud or something like that, wears a full Sweeney collar. Full face, half Sweeney, full Sweeney. Those are your three types of, of sides on the collar. Most of the time, you can make a full, uh, a half Sweeney collar work. Go into a collar shop or a harness shop. That's what most of your collars are going to be, is a half Sweeney. Just like Zodiac's collar here. 
Oh, the parts of the collar. We always call this the throat of the collar. Uh, this is the, well, I don't know, the latch, the top. Uh, we like to keep those tight. We don't want them to spread. Um, even on a collar with a buckle, that could use a little tightening. We like to keep those tight on top. You don't want them opened up. They won't fit your neck good. And if you open them too far, they'll actually break that throat. What the collar is made of is a heavy straw, generally a rise straw through this uh, front part that the name is escaping me right now, what this front part is. Wish Andy was here, he'd know. Uh, that's made of straw, good stiff straw. And if that's why if you open a collar too far, you can break that, break the straw and then it doesn't hold its shape. Uh, generally, this is filled with a hair, um, pig hair, cow hair, something like that, and, and some straw for cushion in here. Um, this type of collar is what I like to run. Um, we do some competitive horse pulling and uh, logging, so we're pulling heavy stuff, and uh, I like to run a pulling collar. Pulling collar is a little bigger around the draft where the tug goes. It, it's bigger, more cushion right there. Um, I like the way a pulling collar fits the top of the neck. A pulling collar is flat down here on the throat of the collar. That's called a no choke. If it rides up, the theory is the horse can uh, still breathe and have his wind. Um, debatable. <laughs> I mean, no horse puller ever actually allows that to happen. But as opposed to some other collars, I do think it, it gives the horse a chance. So I'll show it this way. Here's your pulling collar with your no choke, flat area. A little easier on their windpipe. Here's your standard farm collar. And that uh, that's a little more rounded. That, that does stand a better chance of cutting their wind off. So, so here's your pulling collars, as I said. This is Elvis's full collar. I wear that on him. No, oh, have I got the wrong collar? The Zodiacs. I put that on him in the, uh, I put the full collar on Elvis. And there's a big old uh, full Sweeney collar. This is, uh, it's not stamped. It's for a pretty big horse. Actually, I might be getting a horse this spring that uses this. Big thick neck on him. He's a stud, good size boy. Gosh, it might be a 31. It's, it's a 30 is what it measures. It's probably stamped a 30. I can't find it. I think there's a Cobentz brand. Um, that they're a little, a little bigger up here on those Cobentz uh, as opposed to the Ligoti, which is actually my preference. I, I like a Cobentz, but I prefer a Ligoti style. <clears throat> so your pulling collar is the heaviest. Uh, probably the most bang for your buck. They cost the most, but they last forever. Even if you're not pulling, it's kind of nice to use one of them. Uh, next in line would be getting a ladder out here. We got more junk around here than we know what to do with. Hey, Nick, did you ever see one of those videos where a guy falls off a ladder? Yep. Plenty. I'll never forget my great uncle Ned, what his last words were. Stop shaking the ladder, you little jerk. <laughs> nice. Uh, here's another half Sweeney. Yeah, this is what Elvis wears in the summer when he puts on a little flesh. Um, we do a lot of pulling in that. Um, half Sweeney. That is stamped 28. Uh, better collars will have their size stamped on there. But anyway, another example of your pulling collar. This is the only adjustable collar I own. And this is, I'm not drunk, I have bad ankles here. Uh, this is a, my local collar shop calls this a logging collar. So it's got this heavy lug on here, like a pulling collar. We're losing our light. Yeah. And it uh, has a pretty good draft, not as big as a uh, 
uh, pulling collar, but bigger than a regular farm collar. It's not a no-choke style. Um, we'll go back to the uh, to that style in a minute. And then this is your basic farm collar, and they work fine. And if you can pick one of these up at a good price and it fits your horse well, no problems. A um, little bit smaller draft. A lot of them don't come with a lug. Uh, these do. Um, there's an old collar. You can see where we, <laughs> the hames and the, and the stuff has pushed into it through the years. Um, so that's your farm collar. Uh, my favorite type of collar, I don't have enough to go around, is the old-fashioned Irish collar. Just love the way these fit. Nice and trim up here on the top of the neck. Um, most of these that I own anyway are full collars, not a half Sweeney. Uh, they have a tick facing, but they have a pig, pig hair in here as a cushion. Um, boy, they made them out of some leather back in the day. Um, uh, Irish collar here. And I use that on a horse when we can. <coughs> My neighbor has a harness shop and he's selling collars and here's one of the new farm collars. Doesn't have much of a lug on here. Um, in fact, I think they got a little thinner through the years. It's not broken yet, but this is a split hide as opposed to a full hide, kind of like on work shoes. Um, split grain leather. You see it, it's, it's a little bit rougher. Um, a cheap collar that, that's pretty functional. It goes right to work and works. This is an Irish collar, and they model it as 24 to 26. This is 130 dollars up to the shop. I don't love a um, this is set up as a 25. It's in the middle. I don't love a, a adjustable collar. I never get them to fit well on the top. You look at the difference between even this farm collar that's been used and used, and look how trim that is up at the top compared to how wide that is. And that really doesn't fit a horse well. Take another one that's for sale at my neighbor's shop. This is a $45 collar. I'll tell you what, I'd like to, I don't, I don't need this, but... I wouldn't mind owning a collar like that. There's another Irish collar. Um, look how trim they are at the top. That fits a horse's neck a lot better than the um, than the adjustable side. I'm, I'm not an adjustable fan. You know, look at that's that's wider across this little 24 to 6 inch collar. You know, that's like eight inches. And, and the lower you push this, the wider that spreads. You know, you can see it spreading. The lower you, the lower hole you put the adjustable in. That's as wide as my big 30 inch pulling collar. It's every bit as wide. That's eight inches on, on a 30 inch collar. And it's eight inches wide on a little uh, 24 to six inch collar. Um, and I never get the hames to fit uh, the perfect up, up top here either um, but I'll say this a lot of people make them work uh, what else should we show about collars about pads um, you don't need to use a collar pad I've showed these we often don't run a collar pad uh, not so much anymore I, I tend to fit them with a pad and then adjust uh, as they put on flesh or lose flesh um, I like a specific type of pad Kind of a, I don't know how closely you can see that, Nick. Kind of a waffle-faced type of pad. They do not develop wrinkles, uh, especially here on the top of the collar. Nice and smooth. Um, you know, I like the decorative fur, but that's, that's just decorative. The inside that goes against the horse is what matters. I'll use some of these. These have gotten better through the years, the black-faced ones. Um... Yeah, they've gotten better through the years where they uh, they don't wrinkle as much. And I looked, I don't have any of the old ones, but they were a harder compound and they would develop a wrinkle and that wrinkle would wear on your horse and could cause a sore. I do 
Still use, I'm gonna show Jimbo's collar. You don't have to move all that, Nick. I do still use a couple of these, uh, and they're just a, a fuzzy collar with foam in the middle. Um, they're a son of a gun to dry out, but I, I've really never had an issue with a sore neck on there. Um, you go to a horse bowl and the guys that still use these, you always see those sitting in the sun drying. This is a 26 inch half Sweeney um, from our local shop, uh, pulling collar with the no choke on the bottom. Uh, it was quite a challenge to make that uh, fit on top and get it snug together, but uh, had it back at the shop a couple times and I think they got it right. They're, they're still adjusting their, they make a very good work collar, but they're still adjusting their patterns on their pulling collars, but uh, they might have it. Um, we seem to really be somewhere with this. One thing on any collar that you want to watch, uh, you want to take something flat, you know, like a floor, <laughs> a wall, and you want to make sure that your collar is, is level. Some collars actually bow, if you view them from the side, they actually bow, especially the bigger sizes. You get into the 28 and 30 inch collars and bigger, um, the longer they are, the more they bow. And uh, some collars, some collar makers struggle with that, and others uh, have a pretty good handle on it. Um, anyway, we we're talking about pads, and I went back to collars. So that's the one style pad. Uh, these waffle faced are another. The uh, black. Like I said, they're, they're getting better all the time. They're a pretty good pad. Uh, this collar is the same. It just, it looks like the old fashioned deer hide collar, but it's not, it's foam in there. I like the old fashioned deer hide collars, pads. You just can't find them. Uh, it's a pretty good material. I'll tell you, this is, I feel it in my hand. This is a little bit rougher and you can almost see wrinkles starting. And, and I don't know if this has ever been on a horse for an hour, but you want to be careful. You want to make sure those wrinkles smooth out because wrinkles are what causes, one of the causes of collar sores. Um, to fit collars, sometimes maybe you could put a collar on a horse and it's a little big. I'll use three different top pads to dial that in. I'm pretty fussy on collar pads, fit. So we got a thin, medium, and a thicker pad. Actually, this is what the old fashioned deer hair collar pads were like. Um, kind of a cloth material, and you did have to let them dry in the sun. I actually liked those. Uh, and that deer hair, deer hair was hollow, somebody told me once, which might be wrong, but, uh, and that really conformed to the shape of a horse's neck. Another thing some guys will do, uh, I'll hang this back up. I don't think we need to get every collar pad down and collar. Another thing that I don't need any of this right now, but sometimes we do, we'll, uh, we'll cut the top out of the pad. And sometimes we'll just actually cut the top out and make two pieces. Other times we'll just cut the, uh, the foam stuffing out of the top of the pad and, and put it in here and fit it that way. Um, I don't have any of those. I just, I don't happen to have a need for one of those right now, but that's uh, something we have to do sometimes. Well, should we get Zodiac out and put a collar on him and show some stuff? <laughs> We've got Andy Herzog helping today. Andy, we appreciate you. Nick, which way makes a better videography? If I'm facing that way or that way? Ah, uh, usually that way. Okay. You hear it from our cameraman, so don't get after me in the comments. <laughs> Not about the videography anyway. A little two-year-old Zodiac, he's out again. He's a dork face. Come here. So, uh, I'm gonna try something. You don't have to follow me everywhere if you don't want. I'm pretty boring. Ooh. So here's one technique 
for putting on a collar. Like I said, this collar needs tightened up on top. I'm 47. We got horses when I was seven. This collar is 40 years old. So, uh, you know, they'll last a long time. We have patched it a little bit here and there. But it's a smaller collar. Obviously, it's not one we're going to put on a, a ton horse and take to a horse pull or a heavyweight or anything. So one way is to unbuckle the top if it unbuckles and, and not spread this too far, as I said, and push up the sides of the horse's neck. Kind of hold it in place with your chest and buckle it. And uh, this collar, actually I think I broke Zodiac in this collar when I was breaking him. It's got pretty small. It doesn't sit back on his shoulders. And I like a small collar. That's a little much. As soon as he does anything, that chokes him. Um, and that's even without a pad. It's pretty small. Um, so, I'm showing you that to show you what a small collar looks like on a horse. Uh, the other thing, this collar isn't very trim up here. Uh, I just want that fit him a little better up here, too. Uh, we'll take this off. Again, don't spread it wide. Keep it buckled. And I'll be right back with a collar that is too big for our boy. What collar do you want to show that's too big, Mike? Uh, I'm not even sure. That Colbens might not be as big as you think. I don't know what kind of collar this one is. I picked it up at a harness shop somewhere. It's not stamped. I don't recognize the pattern. It's a pulling collar. Um, no choke on the bottom. I don't know if somebody soaked this or really broke it in or what. Put your head right in there, Mo. Get right in the collar. And, uh, boy, it's, doesn't have a lot of, doesn't hold its shape well. Kind of like a cowboy hat that's been in the rain too many times. Um, but it works when he gets on him and it kind of molds to his neck. So you can, if you don't trust your horse, you can snap that right back through here. He should be okay. I lied to you. I got him. I got him. Ooh. I don't know what size that collar is. I didn't measure. I do know it's too big, even with a pad. Even with a top pad, that's plenty big. If I was to put a top pad on top of this, pad. Uh, that's what too big looks like. Uh, can flop around. Uh, some of the polling guys fit them pretty big and they beat me every week. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm as much or more of a working horse guy as I am a pulling horse guy. So uh, I fit them a little tighter. What I don't like about a big collar, it moves on the horse. And every time it moves, you can cause a sore. Uh, the, the stiller that collar stays, the better. Whoa, son. So we'll get this off him and put his real collar on. So I've just showed you too small and too big. When you take a collar off, you, you lift it up so the wider part is up here by his eye sockets. I probably could have chosen a better acting horse. This guy's a piss pot. He's a pretty devil. And he's learning all the time, too. This collar... I'll wait till I'm back in the frame here. This collar that I've been working Zodiac in is... I thought it was a 25, and it measures 25, but it's stamped 26. Um, half Sweeney. Got a thick pad in there. I'll tell you, that's big enough. Um, Zodiac's one of those deceiving horses in looks. And the way he acts, you'd think he's smart, but he's not. Silly boy. Come here. Uh, I'll tell you, that collar looks plenty big. Get your hand in there pretty comfortable. I almost wouldn't mind putting an extra top pad in there. Behave. Um, but Zodiac has a 
steep, not steep, the opposite of steep, a really nice lay back of shoulder. If you view them from the side, Nick, please. You, you look at that angle of shoulder and it, it slopes right back. And I kind of like that because a uh, collar rests on that collar bed and shoulders real nice if you behave for a minute. Uh, whereas a, a steep one that, that doesn't have the layback, the collar sits like this and it hangs. It hangs from the top of the collar. One with more of a steeper, uh, not steep, but more of a sloping shoulder gives it a nice collar bed and it sits back nice. Uh, so this looks plenty big here. If I hooked Zodiac up to something and moved him about 10 feet, uh, especially because of that slope of shoulder, that slides right back um, and, uh, and takes up all that space. You can look back on the logging videos on some of our other videos and see that. Uh, so I guess we've covered collars. Oh, I did bring one thing down just to illustrate a point. Uh, this is one of those black pads and it's getting a little wore out. Straighten up. We'll leave that on video. I don't care. If he needs to learn to be a horse. We're getting a little uh, peeling of the material here. You could get a sore neck on the top. So I've retired this pad here uh, because of that, because of that uh, peeling on the neck. Well, we've about beat collars into the dirt. And uh, let's, uh, let's move on to Hames. A couple styles of Hames we deal with mostly. This is your basic farm Hame. Um, kind of a nice bend to it. Uh, doesn't have a lot of adjustment up and down for your draft, but it does have some. Uh, and it has adjustments on the side for uh, different size horses up and down. Uh, this particular Haim, I think is a 24. And, uh, yeah, that's a 24 inch Haim. Um, which is why it's not on a harness. I don't have any horses that fit it right now. But your basic farm Haim, uh, they work. Um, done a lot of work with a farm Haim on horses through the years. Next, uh, is your pulling Haim. And this is what I like to use. Actually, if I had what I really like, it would have, uh, it'd be stainless steel, but you know, money's an issue. You're pulling hames uh, quite like a farm hame, except they have a little more adjustment for draft up and down and double hame straps. The end of the hame is built a little stronger into that. Uh, the modern farm, the modern pulling hames actually have bolts for these elevators up and down, and you can dial those in pretty close. Um, for all I know, maybe the most modern version of the farm hames have that. I'm not sure. Um, but that's what I like to run when, when possible. Uh, another type. And then uh, I still have the old Dick Wallingford. It was a genius when he invented these. Aluminum hames. And I actually still use these on one of the horses. They're functional. They don't have a lot of adjustment for draft. The bend isn't quite as good as our modern. They, they don't quite bend as much and fit a collar. Some guys actually like to bend hames on a hame bender. You can't do that with aluminum. But they'll never break. I think there's a guarantee on these not to break. And they had two hame straps. And, uh, you know, the same type of uh, elevators up and down. Uh, you could even go up there if you needed to. I think Dick did with those big heavyweights he won all those pulls with. Uh, there were some big horses. But well, let's, uh, Zodiac's collared. Let's put some hames on him here. I'm going to show you why we did not use these hames. Ooh, but 24 inch hame on a 26 inch collar. And it just is uh, too short. You know, put your draft wrong. It doesn't fit the collar well. Let me get a hame strap. BRB here.
I doubt the same strap will even reach. Yeah, it's just too short. These hames are too small for the collar. Now, I'm already in the top elevator if you want to show Nick. And we could loosen this top aim strap a lot. I've seen guys do this. I can even go one more notch. I've literally seen guys run horses like this. I don't know how. It must be they don't work them hard. I don't know how they don't have sore necks. Uh, there's your 24-inch hame. And you loosen that all the way. Put it in the collar. And you can almost get that to fit the collar. And here we go. We got them on. But if you're going to do any work, that's not good. Uh, hell, your draft isn't even that far off on these. But the trouble is, up here... As viewed from behind might be better. <laughs> Are we making a dizzy audience moving around so much? This should be a straight across. It shouldn't have that sag. When the horse pulls, that flexes all the time. And the more it does, it, it causes a sore neck. Uh, especially if you combine that with a, a wide collar on top or something. Uh, you, you don't want your hames that far apart. You don't... You never want that much of an arch, that much of a sag on your hame straps. So, too small of a hame. My preference is a 26-inch hame on a 26-inch collar, or a 28-inch hame on a 28-inch collar. Put these away. Down there they go. This might be an example of too big of a hame. I can't remember what size these are. This is a set of pulling hames. Let me go back to, eh, we'll hit it later. Ooh, partner. Oh, I didn't get any wrenches ready before the video. Finally well, that's a 26 inch hem on a, that might be a 28 inch hem. Let me give this a look. Wouldn't be impossible for us to make that work. That's a 26 inch aim, and that's what I'm running on him. That's why I've been dreading doing this collar, this video. I hate fitting hames to collars. I'm very particular about it, and I want everything fitting just right. It takes a long time to get it all dialed in. I really didn't want to go through all that effort, but I thought uh, it might be of interest to a lot of people. That might be pretty small here. We'll try these. That might not be bad. Hey, I gotta get our hame strap back. I'm okay, I'll get right back in the frame. All right. I think, and I'm not going to mess around. There we go. I got it buckled. We're not going to put two ham straps on for purposes. That's not too bad of a ham fit. Uh, fits this collar pretty good, both sides without gaps. Uh, the draft falls in a pretty good spot. You look at this draft, it falls right about where we're working him. Uh, right on that lug. You know, you got a little adjustment up and down with that draft. On my lug card, I'd probably put it up. Uh, truth is, for what I do, I would probably drop this one notch. I don't have a wrench in my hand or I'd do it right now, but, and I don't have strong enough hands. I'd probably drop that one notch and just tighten this, maybe you can see from right here, or maybe you see from where you are. Tighten this one notch and, and get rid of that gap there. 
Some guys like to bend the hames. I, I don't really. A lot of heavyweight guys bend the hames a lot. Um, I rarely do. So not a bad fit. 26 inch pulling hames. We ought to have these on this harness instead of what we have probably. And just for a complete video, we'll use the old Mr. Wallingford uh, Haynes. What an impressive man Dick Wallingford was up there in Maine. Boy, was he a quite a horse puller, quite a logger, quite a timber man. By all accounts, just a good guy also. Um, the guy that designed these Haynes. There we go. We got to tighten this a little, do I? Might even just go down a notch. So one thing you always want to do with uh, Haynes, with these adjustable elevators like this, you want to make sure they're in the same spot on both sides. These adjustable hames never quite fit as good as the uh, as the steel. Or, did I call them adjustable aluminum hames? Never quite fit as good as the, the steel. Right, pull this out of here. I can't remember what horse I used to use these on. Huh? Oh, it was Elvis when he was what? Rickety old ham strap. I don't think I'd go working with this strap anymore, but it serves our purposes for showing general fit. These are a 26 inch aluminum ham also. I think we got a good fit, maybe even better than the steel on this one. Hey, don't make me stop this car. Oh, something isn't right here. Show the other side. Just don't like to lay. Something lays on here. Not sure what it is. Let me get her buckled and look over. Look it over. There we go. That's not too bad. Actually, I don't mind that fit at all. We'd go right to work on that. Yep, that's not a bad fit. The draft is plenty high where it falls on these aluminum hames. It must have been made up a little higher. Uh, works fine for logging because your draft is pretty high if you're on a logging arch. Um, something with a lower point of draft, like a plow or logging on the ground or a horse pull, you'd probably want to lower that draft some one way or another. Anyway... Hames and collars, I guess we got that about covered. Can you think of anything to add, Nick? I can't think of anything. Are we boring you to tears? No. It looks like this guy's bored or anxious or something. <laughs> That's good.